About this OKB-0 Emmerich was talking about. Its location and features match the citadel in the mountains northeast of the Soviet base camp. Built during the time of Alexander the Great, it was left in ruins following one of Genghis Khan's campaigns. Its occupants changed time and again due to war, and it was expanded on more than one occasion. Ultimately, it fell into the hands of the Soviet philosophers. The Soviet army was using it as the headquarters of its Afghan invasion force. But it would seem that Skullface's connections with the philosophers gave him license to develop Sahelanthropus there. And that's what Emmerich was doing at the place before he got the axe. But OKB is a designation the Soviets use for weapon design bureaus. There's no way they'd have one of those in Afghanistan. And in principle, the numbers that follow OKB are always integers above one. There is no zero. Perhaps this was a secret facility of the Soviet and Chinese philosophers dating back prior to World War II. Though it's more likely Skullface just picked a fake name that more or less fit the Soviet's pattern. It doesn't go there often, but he sure as hell won't miss this. They use the heliport on top of the tower for his visits. Start by heading for the heliport. Then wait for your chance to make contact with Skullface. It seems Sahelanthropus' armor is made from depleted uranium. That offers some serious protection. The U.S. military is planning on using it for its main battle tanks, too. Maybe that's where Emmerich got the technology. Uranium. They're using nuclear fuel for armor now? No. What they use for nuclear fuel is uranium-235, which is extracted from natural uranium. Depleted uranium is a byproduct of that process. Sort of like the leftovers, I guess. The garbage. Uranium-235 makes up 0.72% of natural uranium whereas depleted uranium contains only 0.2%. What are the benefits of using it for armor? It's a pretty short list. Uranium's a heavy metal, like lead, meaning it can hold a greater amount of kinetic energy. But it also boasts a hardness closer to tungsten. That makes it an ideal material to use for, say, armor-piercing ammunition penetrators. But it's not the best choice for armor. Its volume is less than that of ceramics, but for an equal weight, you could end up with less protection. So why use it then? According to Emmerich, it came down to him being unable to source ceramics technology from a manufacturer. Plus, given that it's an upright walking vehicle, he wanted to reduce the bulk of certain areas. Despite all that, depleted uranium still makes for some tough armor. And Emmerich says it's been proven in live fire tests. It stops most Soviet tank shells. Emmerich didn't go with depleted uranium for Sahelanthropus' armor because of its strength. He had nukes in mind. Exactly. It's meant to use its body as the fuel component for a nuclear weapon. Sahelanthropus uses built-in uranium enrichment Archaea to melt its own body and extract uranium-235 from the depleted uranium in its armor. Those Archaea perform the enrichment in an extremely short time. The concentration jumps by a factor of several hundred, from 0.2% to over 90%. The end result being highly enriched weapons-grade uranium. Sahelanthropus's body itself becomes a nuclear bomb. Emmerich says if it were to self-destruct, the nuclear yield would be somewhere in the region of 15 kilotons. Since you need about 50 kilograms of highly enriched uranium to trigger a nuclear reaction, that would mean Sahelanthropus contains something like 23 tons of depleted uranium. That's not very much. No, it isn't. That's about what you'd expect to find in a main battle tank's armor. The point is, it can be transported anywhere, even use its conventional weaponry on the battlefield, and the international community will never suspect a thing. I just received word from the R&D team and the transport team out of Afghanistan. They finished installing Sahelanthropus on the base. It's ours now. All right. Don't let any of the staff touch that thing. Especially Emmerich. Of course. That guy's crush on Sahelanthropus is beyond a joke. Guess he really wants to see his tech stand on its own two legs this time. That's not gonna happen. I know it. So you've got no plans to make it operational again? Damn right. Boss, I want to hear it straight from you. Hear what? What the hell do you want with that thing? The drive is busted. It's not like it has a nuke on board. Even if the metallic archaea could turn it into a nuclear weapon, all it can do is self-destruct. 
Subtle Anthropus just isn't a weapon anymore. It'll draw unwanted attention without even being a deterrent. I know. The weapon's development strut sank two feet under that thing's wake. That's one year's drop in a single night. We've started on reinforcing the strut, but there's no guarantee it'll hold up if a storm hits. I know that, too. Boss, why keep it? It's a mark. Uh, us Diamond Dogs, we don't have a country to call home. That means we have no past, nothing to prove that we lived. Every one of us threw it all away when we came here. Sahelanthropus is a symbol to show that the likes of us brought at least one crisis to its end. A mark in history. So we can't just fade away. It's of no practical use to us. But we still need it. A symbol of what we've done. I'm glad I sounded you out on this. Snake, on behalf of all of us, I want to thank you. I don't need gratitude. I need security. Keep Emmerich away from that thing. Roger that.